Hello, hello, and good afternoon, everyone. Hey, it's Alexis in Southeast Coastal Georgia. Yes, I'm a Pampered Chef Consultant, and I live here. We're making dinner tonight. Dinner tonight is shepherd's pie. I um, got an email today from Pampered Chef, like I was a guest, you know, like you normally do when, you, when you're um, on uh, a, a mailing list. And I was thinking beef stroganoff, but I didn't have the noodles and I didn't have mushrooms for it. So I was like, eh, let's see. And like this shepherd's pie came up. Ah, oh, yeah, I have all the ingredients for it. Well, maybe one or two I didn't have, but we can substitute for that. So we're gonna, shepherd's pie is basically ground beef, some veggies in there, make a little roux type stock in there, you know, a little liquid type thing, and then throw on some mashed potatoes. So I have the mashed potatoes because I didn't want to come in and see me peel, peel potatoes. I'm telling you, Peeling potatoes is like watching paint dry, all right? But y'all need one good thing, a peeler in your house. Yeah, this peeler is really good. It's a pampered chef one. Uh, there's actually two different type of peelers. This is single, and then they have a set that comes with the serrated uh, peeler and also a julienne, which is my favorite, um, another favorite little gadget. And I have all the gadgets to make dinner, all right? So hello, everyone. Let me know where you're coming in from. Tap hearts, share out, follow, because we all need to eat more at home. And this is pretty simple that if I can make this, you can make it, all right? Uh, you do need a pot, you need two pots. You need a pot for the mashed potatoes and then a pan uh, to saute up your beef. Uh, we're just gonna go with the flow on this one. I don't really have a menu printed out or anything like or a recipe printed out. So, hey there, how you doing there, Panda? Uh, Legendary Trash 77 Panda to go, live together. Okay, uh, Dirt Boy, how you doing? Uh, let's see who else is in. Julian from Naples, Florida. Oh gosh, how you doing there, Julian? Uh, let's see, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, says user. What's your name? Uh, it begins with a D, because uh, I think you have a D in your, your picture there. Uh, let's see, Arizona says, uh, uh, Dylan, Dylan, oh my gosh. Y'all, when you make a name, put a period between it or a dash or an underscore or something so I can read your name, y'all. I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, says user D. Uh, hey there, Samantha. Hello, Mary. How are you doing? So um, I already did up. I'm going to sw swing you over this way. And I think it's backwards right now. I think I'm backwards. Hold on. Uh, mirror my image. Mirror imaging is off. I need mirror imaging. I was right on the first one. All right. So anyway, we have um, a pot. Uh, which is like, I think it's two quarters, something like that. It's a small pot. And I put in here about, I don't know, five nice sized potatoes. I sliced them up nice into nice little dices, covered it with water and I put salt in it and we're just boiling it. All right. Yeah. I have some mess messages up there, over there. And I have my son's little message here that he left for me. Oh, I, I think it was like, Oh, wow. That, he was going to be a sophomore, and he's a senior in college, so that's over two and a half, two years old sitting on my counter right there. But I'll, I'll read it to you, all right, while you're here. It says, congratulations on your massive party. Yeah, I'm a Pampered Chef consultant. We had a party. We had a uh, Miss You Show party way back in the day. And it says, thank you for everything you do, especially with helping pay for my furniture, because we were doing a, a, a uh, my, my thing to raise money for, to get him furniture for his apartment that he's now using. He used it in the fraternity house, and now he moved it over to the house he's renting with five other guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, of course, his kitchen is stocked with Pampered Chef. And it says, thank you for helping me pay for my furniture. Hope you have a great day at work. Love you. Love Bryce. Okay. So that was so sweet of him. I'm, I'm trying to make sure not that my potatoes do not overboil because when the potato pot, we have the lid on it and that potatoes go over like this, it makes a mess on your stove. So just crack the lid so it comes to boil a little bit quicker. All right. I'm going to put that down to medium type heat on there. All right. Uh, let's see. We are fine. Resilient Fort Myers is destroyed. Yes. I, um, I have a friend that got me into Pampered Chef. Her name is Brenda. She used to live um, like a, a, in my same uh, subdivision here, and she moved down to Coral Gables, and uh, her her place survived. Uh, but it's a mess down there. And then I have another, my, my shirt is just a mess, y'all. Uh, my um, I have another friend that I an acquaintance that I met through Pampered Chef at the Fort Lauderdale vacation that I took last year. And her name is Jan and her, she was on a cruise ship uh, during the storm and came home to her house car totally destroyed, just gone. They said that the salt 
from the cars. She couldn't even open up the door because of salt. You know how salt get corrosive. And so she couldn't even get inside her own car because of the salt in there. Uh, so thanks for coming in and spending a little bit of your time. We have 94 people here. My name is Alexis. I live here in the southeast coast of Georgia. And today we're making um, sharpest pie. I already had the potatoes on because we need to make mashed potatoes. And we're going to saute up some beef. I got some ground round if you watched me before uh, on I forgot what day it was Friday. I went live and we did chili. And I had a three pound thing of ground round because we got it for $3.99. I'm gonna turn on my stove. I'm using uh, my enamel cast iron uh, little skillet here. All right, it is, it is pretty wide so I can get a good sear on stuff. And we're gonna put our ground round in there once our pan heats up. All right, hey Zen Squad, how you doing, Christine? Zen Squad's over, um, is a former uh, expate from Texas living over in Switzerland and she does a lot of herbal and oils and stuff like that over there so I know her from Periscope if anybody knows the platform Periscope please put up Periscope so we can say hello to you and welcome you over here to TikTok yeah I used to go live on Periscope uh, like almost every day almost every day at 6 6 30 in the morning and make my son breakfast and lunch and get dinner ready and stuff like that and that was a whole lot of fun but that went bye bye and then we went over to Haps and that went bye bye and now I'm over here on TikTok so uh, if you are watching right now uh, you can go into my profile and join me over on YouTube because the live here and all my lives on TikTok are downloaded and then uploaded over to YouTube so you won't miss anything at all. Yeah, yeah Periscope was so fun. Hello, I'm new here, says a uh, New York girl in Atlanta. Oh my God, New York. I lived in Atlanta for like 24 years in that in the Atlanta area. Loved Atlanta, but I had to drive through Atlanta this past summer to go um, see my son up in Tennessee because he was a whitewater rafting guide up there and it took me seven hours, but I went through Atlanta. I didn't even recognize the place. There are so many new buildings. It is so overgrown, it was, especially around Moore's Mill, Hal Mill area. That's where I was my last apartment was down in that area. And uh, I worked in the hotel industry in Atlanta. I started up in the Buckhead area at the Lenox Inn, Terrace Garden Inn, and then over to the Hotel Nico. And then down to, oh my gosh, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, I forgot what the last one was that I didn't like at all. And then I moved down to the uh, uh, Georgia International Convention Center near the airport. And then we transferred from that one location to the new location because of Fifth Runway coming into Atlanta. So now you know all about me, right? It's a nightmare. I know. It isn't, isn't it a nightmare? <laughs> a nightmare. Unless it's nighttime. The only time I ever drove through Atlanta that was really creepy, the creepiest drive through Atlanta, was during the 1996 Olympics. Yeah, I took the bus down to the Olympics, the opening ceremonies, and there wasn't a car on the road. They told us all to stay home, and there's only a buses. It was the creepiest thing in my life. All right, so I got my pan nice and hot, and I'm going to put in, I'm gonna put you over here, because you can see, I can angle you down, you can see my pot and pans and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, there it is, all right? And now I can see your comments, but not as good as where I was before, okay? So we got our pan nice and hot. We're gonna add our beef. This is about a pound of ground ground. All right, just put it down there. All right, so you can use your mix and chop or mix and chop and spatula. Uh, we're gonna let this, I'm gonna spread this out just a little bit more. Put that on the, on the burner flat. Yeah, it's just get a little bit so it's the same density. And we're just gonna let this sit. Okay, just let it sit. We're gonna get it nice and brown and then mix it up. All right, don't be mixing it while it's like raw because then it gets stuck all over your spatula on there. All right, uh, let's see. I thought that was a creepy, that was a creepy drive, girl. <laughs> Nobody on the road there. Hello, uh, let's see, uh, you're, you're new. All right, I got that. I'm going back to the read them. I love Pampered Chef. They ate extremely, they are extremely helpful, says, uh, uh, Dillon, Dillon, I think I'm going to call you. What state, what you making? We're making uh, shepherd's pie. Okay. Uh, let's see. I thought, that, yeah, that was creepy. What state are you in now? Not state of emergency. That's for sure. <laughs> Not just, just where we were, but, um, we're going to cut up some, uh, carrots and onions. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to cut this stuff up. Okay. One, we can use a knife. All right, and put cut this up, and then I'm gonna use my uh, mix, mix and chop. Oh my God, my food chopper, my food chopper. This is 
This is like 30 some years old already. It's really old. I, I had my first pampered chef party way back in Atlanta, way back in the day. So I'm gonna get my carrots cut up. I only have a couple carrots left. I thought, hey, let's just use these babies up. All right, we're gonna put them in our shepherd's pie. And no, I guess happy to see me cooking. I don't cook that often anymore, um, Zen Squad. Uh, it's just my mom and I. And like I'm making enough here for like um, probably two days at least. All right. You can have it today and then tomorrow I gotta work. So I don't need it then. All right, let's get that. All right, just cutting up my carrots. I got the, I got the, I cheated and I love these little carrots because I can, I can eat them just right out of the bag and not have to worry about them. Uh, so got that. Get that out of the way. Couple more. And then we're gonna use up the, the food chopper and chop up that onion really good. You've had that for, I know I've had that for ages. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not sure how many I sold either, you know, being a pamper chef consultant. And last week, last month was probably my worst month ever since I, well, one of the worst months I ever started with pamper chef. Zero sales. I didn't, I didn't even try. I was like, all right, I don't know. I just not, not, I need to start my business back. And if anybody wants to help me and host a party, that would be great because I have a big bill coming up. A big bill. Uh, you know, we all have like our own uh, mental challenges or health challenges. Yes, mental too. Uh, health challenges. And um, I have some teeth that need to be fixed. And I learned today it's going to be about $5,000. Uh, no, you know what? I don't sell those um, gingerbread um, kits anymore. They don't have them available. So when I, when I do go live, I try to... Uh, make stuff that you can buy, you know? So yeah, so I have uh, some dental issues going on. I have a tooth that's infected and it's been infected for quite some time and now it's starting to bother me the rest of the time. And I finally got enough nerve and courage to go to uh, or call the dentist, call this dentist that I was referred to. And uh, it's gonna be $250 just to go and get it checked out and get an x-ray. And then another $1,020 to remove it and graft it, if we're gonna do a graft. Uh, I can go there and just get my options. And um, I'm scared. I have, a, I have a fear of losing my teeth and this is just the first of the process. So I don't wanna cry on it. I almost cried when I got off the phone, but I did not. All right, let's get this nice and hot. I do have some grease in here, but there. So anyway, that's that. Uh, so if I can get like say six to eight parties a month, I'll be able to afford my teeth. Okay. Uh, getting fixed. Uh, and then it's, it's a scary thing. That's all I can say. It's really, this is probably, this is really, really scary. Okay. To me. And I know the fear of the unknown is right there, but, um, I know I can get through it, but I need to earn the money. I don't want to ask and say, Hey, can you pay for this? Cause that's just not me. I, I rather earn it. I've, I've always got myself out of pickles, you know, and uh, or predicaments. All right. Oh, so anyway, here's my grease on here. I'm gonna just throw this in the garbage. All right. So if anybody wants, um, you know, find out, you know, if you want to host a party for somebody that got all their stuff destroyed, we can do that too, okay? All right, so I'm adding my carrots in here cause they're raw car carrots. All right, into my pan with my ground ground. Uh, I find the ground ground is a little bit better to use because it's not as greasy. And let's just move those around so we can cook the carrots. Co carrots take the longest to cook, so that's why we're using that. This I'm gonna save and put it in my um, compost to make vegetable stock, all right? So we're just gonna get this and cut this up in the, into like smaller pieces. Yeah, I could just chop, 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 but I wanted to show you this. This is 30 years old and it cuts things into not neat, uh, slices, but you see how this is? It chops, 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 and you don't have no more tears anymore. It does nuts, candies, anything hard that you don't want a perfect slice for. So just put it over, over your um, onions or whatever you're cutting, and just pound away. So this is a stress releaser too. Of course, the more you chop, the finer it gets, the stronger your onions are going to be. You will definitely be safe. <laughs> um, 
no, right now it's infected and it's been infected for months and I can feel it. Um, I can feel it. I've been taking Tylenol and Advil just to uh, get me through the day for at least a couple weeks now. So I finally called in. Y'all know my, when I was on Periscope, y'all knew everything about me. So just catching up to speed for those of you that don't know. So anyway, uh, this, this thing here, this is the food chopper, right? And the food cho chopper does come apart. And let me put all that down there. This is the main part, okay? You can clean it like that, but be careful because these are super, super sharp. And then you have this part uh, that is replaceable, all right? So if you lost it, got broke. And then this is a replaceable part because you see those little uh, rivets? Sometimes people take it out too hard and they strip them or it cracks or something like that, they lose it. This is a replaceable part. And it is replaceable since uh, if I got, if I need a new one, I can get it, and even though this is 35 years old, it's still gonna fit. So I'm gonna put this over to the side and keep it off because I hand wash this, hand wash it. And uh, you can also use, there is a tool that sharpens that stuff. I'm trying to find it here, is that it? No, that's the other one, here it is. This is a, this is a tool that sharpens uh, that type of blade. There's a scissors and you can sharpen your uh, food processors on this side's knife and this is, this is double-sided right here, and this is single-sided sharpening, okay? So I have sharpened it a few times. I didn't know about this until I became a Pampered Chef consultant. I was like, oh, you can sharpen that? Yeah, you can. So, all right, let's get this moving along. There we go. Yeah, nice, nice. It's still a little pink. We're gonna add in our onions. Just add it right in. We're gonna saute these babies up. Now it does call for peas. I'm gonna open a can of peas because huh, I don't have any frozen peas. That was one of the ingredients I didn't have, but I'm like, hey, you can substitute canned peas because I want more veggies in here. All right, there we go. All right, now there is a little bit of oil in here, which is still fine because we're gonna make a little bit of a roux uh, and the oil and the flour is gonna thicken um, the sauce up, all right? And again, I just eyeball this. We are making shepherd's pie. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways. I'm probably gonna get a cup and actually add in some liquid to my flour. And I don't know how much I have. I think it's, was that one tablespoon? This is a new new gadget by Pampered Chef and I can't see how much is in there. I think it's uh, three tablespoons because the top is four. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons. We're have nah, a little bit less. All right. And then add some water. We have two cups of water over here. Actually, we can actually use the potato starch, but oh, we'll just with the potato water. But I'm going to just add some water to my flour. And the reason why you do this so that you don't have lumpy gravy, okay? Never put flour unless you're doing butter and then the flour and cooking it that way. But since it's already in there, it's fine. Just mix it up. All right. I love that tool. Do you love that one? Isn't it great? Uh, you got to go. Okay. Thank you, New York, for coming in. I appreciate it. All right, the uh, replay will be up over on YouTube. All right, so there we go. We're gonna, just gonna get it, and hopefully it's all smeared in there, like nice and liquidy, no no lumps. All right, very, very good, very good. All right, so now we're gonna get this nicely seasoned up. We have no salt and pepper in here, so we're gonna have to add that, but I actually, um, instead of salt, I'm gonna add in a uh, it's a culture vegetable or beef broth, and so I'm going to use some bouillon cubes. I'm just going to use one. All right, and we'll just put that in there. Eventually, it'll, it'll melt. All right, and we're going to add in. This is a browning sauce, so it gets nice and dark and brown. And you're going to add in. I don't know about a teaspoon of it. There we go. There. Actually, a little bit more. Yeah, browning. All right, it's a browning. It doesn't. It doesn't. It just colors it a little bit darker. Uh, if you're using like turkey meat and you want to like fool your your family that it is um, <laughs> that it is uh, beef, you can use that and it'll darken it up for you. And then I use about two te two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This this thing really does enhance your flavor of your foods, especially beef. All right. 
And we're going to use some tomato paste. There we go. And I'll probably use a good two, ta two tablespoons of tomato paste. Two, two tablespoons. This is a measure all. And I used this for last, last week for the chili. And I use it this week. Okay. There you go. That's good enough. Yeah. And I like these tubes because it, it stays in my refrigerator until I need it. And I'll have to pull it out of the freezer. So there you go. Just squish it up. It's in one of the metal little thing. I'm going to add that in there. There. And I think that's about it for right now. See, that um, little cube is melting. It's just melting in here. So that's going to give us the deep flavor and the tomato paste in here. It's going to be so good. All right. Just mix it up. Everything's still cooking in. Those uh, carrots really need to cook up. And now we're going to add in my water. Or we're going to add in some our flour paste. that nice and thick look how thick that got up and now you're going to add in water about a cup of water will do and we're going to bring this to a little simmer and you hear the the potatoes over there those are cooking really nice okay there. and we just want to bring this up to a nice boil and there's my beef cube in there and again i'm not adding salt because that beef cube has a lot of sodium in it if you look at it one cube one cube has 46% um, of your salt intake. So do not add salt if you're adding this in it, all right? Because it will be salty. Okay, I did add salt to my potato water though, because that brings your water up to a higher temperature. So it boils um, a little bit at a higher temperature and cooks your, your, your uh, potatoes a little quicker. All right, oh, this is looking really nice. Let's add some more water. It's gonna be a while before we switch this out. And I'm all done with that. All right. We are. Oh, this is looking so lovely. We're going to get some peas and put some peas in here. Like, I have to use canned peas because I don't have fresh frozen peas. But that's going to be fine. That's fine with me. Or just skip that all together. Some people put green beans in there. Hello, Mom. Mom, how are you doing? Got to go. Bye. Uh-oh. I don't have to go yet. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So anyway, hello, Lynn. Thanks for coming in. All right. So tap hard to share out and follow up. My name is Alexis and I teach you how to use your kitchen tools. Most of mine are Pampered Chef because I sell them and you can buy any of these tools. The link is in my profile. Uh, this, this video will be downloaded and uploaded over to YouTube. Just FYI for those who are just coming and going. And um, if you're on YouTube, please say hello. All right. I'm angling you down again because I got to switch this out. I got my potatoes. I think my potatoes are done. Let's see, got the potatoes over here, and yeah, I think they're, I think they're done. Let's give another minute. Let's try one. I'm gonna get a big potato out. I cut them small because the smaller you cut your potatoes, the quicker they cook. Also, so let's cool this off, and it looks totally done. Mmm. All right. That fits fine. All right, so I am going to save some of my water from my potatoes just in case I want to add more because I can add, instead of adding plain water, I can add potato water to here and it'll even give it more flavor. All right, so I'm going to get my potatoes out. There we go. My potatoes are already done. We're going to save some of that water. Got it, and I need a mat somewhere I can put this. All right, let's put this right here. All right, because I gotta move this. This is nice. Okay, this is nice. Let's taste it. We're gonna use a little tasting spoon. Get yourself a little spoon and taste your taste what it tastes like, so that you know if you need to add anything else to it. Mm. I don't know. I think it tastes really good. It tastes good. There's definitely enough salt in there. I'm going to move this back to the back burner. I'm going to turn the front one off. Turn both of them off. There we go. 
and oops I forgot to bake start I forgot to heat up my um, my oven I need to heat my, heat my oven up we're actually going to put it under the broiler let's put it under the broiler later okay but we'll do we'll do this and I'll put it on the broiler and I'll take some pictures and I'll show you at the end so this this one here we need to mash our potatoes up and I'm going to use this mix and masher by Pampered Chef. It's a really simple tool. It doesn't hurt your pots and pans. Um, and I need some ingredients to put in there. This and this and this. All right. So sometimes I don't have milk and I just use sour cream. But today we're going to use milk and sour cream in here and mash it all up. Keep the lid on it until you're ready to go. We're also going to use some butter. Pretty good block of butter, at least a good tablespoon or more. Okay, in there. Got that ready to go. Got my milk ready to go. And milk. Let's see. We can use this side. This is a good uh, quarter cup. And get my sour cream ready to squirt it out. All right, so good quarter cup. Good, maybe a quarter cup of sour cream and the butter. There we go. Got it all in there. Let's see how it mashes right now. All right. So we are, you love Pampered Chef? Oh, thank you so much, Lenny. How are you doing? Uh, all the products are available for sale. I am a Pampered Chef consultant and I appreciate your support. Uh, just by watching the, 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 the channel, share it out to five of your friends. Get them all in here. I got to turn all that back on there. Get that a little bit less liquid back here i have a lot of liquid in my shepherd's pie i'm going to just keep everything in that one pot pan back here this one here i'm going to reduce down the sauce a little bit because it's a little uh watery and then we're going to just layer the potatoes right on top all right and just do one two pan shepherd's pie you can't put it in another nice little container and uh let that out but i'm going to try and reduce this down just the liquid i put a little bit too much liquid in there no big deal all right, so our potatoes are in here. We cut them small, covered with water, put salt in it, boiled it, got them nice and soft. We added milk, sour cream, and butter. Now, mash away. And you may have to add some more liquid. I already added salt at the beginning, but we will taste it at the end, okay? And I still see the liquid. Once you see, don't see the liquid, that's when you need to add some more. And it all depends how thick you want them to be. Not sure if I have enough potatoes to cover that whole thing. I may have to get my other. I thought I was going to put it in there, but I may have to transfer that and put it in another container. Yeah, I think we may, because I don't think I have enough. I thought I was doing enough potatoes to like sink a ship, because I did about five medium-sized potatoes in here. All right, just keep on mashing. And this has a rounded edge, so it goes around the edges here. One thing I like about these pots and pans is that the handle does remove, so it doesn't have to be out here. See, the handle removes, and it's universal to all the rest of the pots and pans by Pepper Chef. I love it. Okay, let's smash, smash, smash. All right, need a little bit more liquid. Let's put a little bit more in. So shepherd's pie is like a nice fall winter type dinner and it is a little cool it was very cool out this morning it was in the 50s down here and we're not used to that cold weather i had to wear long sleeves today let's see there we go. and now we can taste it i need to put a little pepper in there uh, you can use white pepper so the pepper flakes don't show up but it is it does have a little bit different taste than regular black pepper. Okay. Put pepper in there. Let me get another spoon, tasting spoon again. Does need salt. And yes, there are pampered chef shakers. Okay. Here, mix that together. Yeah, pepper in here, but you don't taste it. You don't see it. Oh, 
Oh, you know what I forgot to put in here? I was going to do garlic. Boil garlic with your mashed potatoes and put them in here. That's really, really good. I totally forgot about it. Thought about it this morning. And I forgot. All right, let's. That's looking really good. Let's put our lid back on and keep it nice and warm. We got our meat done up over there. Let's put some stuff away. Clean as you go so you don't have a big mess at the end. Alright. And that. All right. Got all that. Whew, we are on a roll here. Got water in there. This was dirty. That I need to lose. And uh, we did use some browning and some Worcestershire sauce. We can put that away. There. And let's get them. All right. So I think, I think this is still going to be too big for it. I think I'm going to get the small one. This is another Pamper Chef enamel cast iron. It's the two quart one. I'm going to get the one quart. one here is the one quart one. I think it's going to be a lot easier to do it in this one than it is those because it'll be too big. I only need four servings, all right? And if I have any leftovers, I can always do a little individual one and put it in another container and freeze it. So good plan. All right, so this is the enamel cast iron line that I'm showing you. It is enamel. Do not use any metal on this because it will scratch your enamel no matter if it's pampered chef or not. And uh, it does have pampered chef on the bottom. It is made by Lodge. And they just brought back this little milk pan. It was discontinued, but they brought it back for the holidays. So you can make stuff in this little pan. It's just so cute. All right. So um, let's see. Um, let's mix this around, and then I'm going to get it and put it in. I think it's looking good. All right. Let me turn that one off in the back because it is getting a little dry on the bottom, and I don't want it to burn. All right. There. Yeah. All right. All right, just getting up the bottom bits and pieces of my uh, shepherd's pie there. But now I need to get some peas and put the peas in there. And it, frozen peas work best, but I don't have frozen peas, so we're going to use canned peas. Pretty peas, sweet peas. All right, so we're going to get the peas, and we're just going to open this up. And I'm only going to use about half the can because I don't need the whole can in there. Right. I'm using my smooth edge can opener. Y'all don't have one of these. You need one. Fill it up. And there you go. We're going to drain some of this off. Mm. Drain my peas. I'm going to put in some peas in my thing. There we go. About half of them. Half a can of peas went inside. We'll use that for another dinner tomorrow. Or I'll eat them by myself. Alright, so we got that. Let me put the pan over there for that and pull over our shepherd's pie part. Again, I can put my potatoes right on here and just put it in the oven, but I thought, you know what? Let's make it look pretty. And we're gonna put it right into this pan, okay? And again, the the um, peas, frozen peas, will look a lot prettier than these peas. All right, we're gonna get this and put it right in our pan. Again, if I have if I have too much, I'll put it in another little one for a freezer meal. And I only use one pound of meat. I think it's all gonna fit because we're gonna put a nice layer of potatoes right on here. And we're gonna pop it into the oven and then put it under the broiler. And you can add cheese on top if you want. But this is so good. Look at that. Isn't that looking good? I think we might have enough. Okay. All right. So this is a um, mix and chop spatula by Pampered Shop. It came out um, 
earlier this year. All right, very good, looks nice. I think I may do a small, small one. I'm gonna leave this here and we'll use that for like a small little container so I can eat it later on. I'll show you how, how we can do that. Now this pan is super hot, so I'm gonna pu push it back using my microwave grips. Hello, I'm Mr. Wright. No, I'm Mr. Left. I'm Miss Wright. You always wanna be Mr. Mr. Wright, but I'm Miss Wright. Yes, I know. We're the microwave grip team and we help her move hot stuff from one place to another so she doesn't burn her fingers. All right, there we go. <laughs> Got it? Got it. All right, and the next one, we're gonna get our potatoes and we're gonna put the potatoes right on top of the meat. And just get your potatoes, all right? And we're gonna put it right on top. I made enough potatoes, so I hopefully there's enough leftovers, okay? Here. Notice I'm nicely scooping it from one container to the other, making it nice and fluffy, not flat and mushy, okay? We like it nice and fluffy. Fluffy is best. And if you want, you can add um, cheddar cheese on top, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm trying to save on calories. There, there. Now this is already warmed up. We can keep it in the oven. I'm gonna probably keep it in the oven for about 15 minutes and then uh, put it underneath the broiler just to brown off my potatoes. There we go. Look at that. This is beautiful. If you were to take give this to somebody like um, like a dinner to take over to your family or friends, definitely this is a beautiful, I got a piece here. I can eat this right now. Mm -mm -mm. Still needs a little more salt. But that's okay. We can add more salt right on top. There. And voila, we have our shepherd's pie all done. We're going to put it in the oven for about 15, you can even put it in 30 minutes if you want, uh, just so that everything marries together and it's nice. And then uh, if it's not browned off, you can brown it underneath your broiler and it'll be all done. All right. Let me see what your, your cap, your thing is. I use that spatula. You use the spatula. Okay, so you're a, you definitely are, uh, dear, dear Ray Cummings. How are you doing? Oh, you need that spatula. Yeah, you, uh, you can purchase it. You can DM me, and um, we can get in touch with each other. Uh, I have one, and I love it. Says uh, Lenny. Yep. Yes, too big. Yeah, the the uh, Irish uh, sass. Uh, this is definitely an Irish type of meal, meat and potatoes type thing. My mom's gonna love this one. I need to order, purchase the um, oh the eight nine set Trisha uh, Irish sass. Just message me, DM me, okay? Uh, follow me and then DM me, and I can get in touch with you. Um, uh, anyway, uh, well, hello there, B B Man Place, Beak Beak Man Place. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? Uh, let's see. I'm going here. All right. I got everybody's comments on there. I had to make mine three times that size because my teen son. Yeah, I'm, it's only my mom and I, and I don't want to have leftovers for days because then I won't be able to come in and make you anything because I'll be eating leftovers for three days, right? So uh, he, yeah, I usually take two servings myself. Okay, just FYI. Uh, except real shepherd's pie is made with lamb. Yeah, originally, uh, and you know what? It's really hard to find minced or ground lamb here. Mm -mm. Not in the South. We don't do that. Okay. But yeah, it's made with minced lamb. Some people use pie crust too. They put the pie crust down first and par cook it and then put the um, meat and the, you know, the mixture and then put the potatoes on top. I'm saving calories, y'all. I'm not eating no pie crust. I'll save the pie crust for the apple pie. Uh, make it in Great, it, great. It. Only beef for me. Yeah, you can actually substitute uh, different things if you want to do chicken in there, ground chicken. If you want to do uh, ground turkey, works really well. That's super good and healthy for you. There's my oven. It's at set to 350 now. Uh, so yeah, you can make it. I uh, only made one pound, but if you are making it for your like a family, do two pounds. And if you're making it for you want to do, a, you know, send some to the neighbors, do three pounds. Okay, they will love to get that. Wouldn't you love me to come over to your house and say? Here, I made this for you. You know how many people would say yes? <laughs> so there you go. So if you're interested, I, you do turkey. I did turkey a while back. Okay, but I the ground beef was, my mom went to the doctor and they said, eat more beef. And I'm on Weight Watchers, which beef is not the best. 
So I used to substitute the ground turkey for the ground beef, but now she needs more beef um, for her diet. So I am, I'm eating the beef. All right, and uh, she can have that other stuff. But I'll make a little side. Oh, let me go get the side one here. Let me get, uh, where do I have? I'll be right back. Hold on a second. I, when would you be coming though? <laughs> where are you? Depends upon how, where you are. <laughs> sure if this one's gonna work but we can yeah it no it's not gonna work I gotta get a smaller one a smaller to go container small to go to get container to get rid of the other stuff we'll do it after after dinner uh Nova Scotia oh that's a really long drive all the way up 95 yeah I'm here in southeast coastal Georgia like right before Jacksonville you have to go through my house through my area to get to to Florida if you come down 95 so <laughs> so yeah uh anyway Hopefully you follow me. All right. My name is Alexis. I'm an independent consultant for Pampered Chef. I would love to help to get you some kitchen tools to your kitchen. Uh, so you're cooking with the best stuff. All right. Uh, if I went back and told my younger self, I would have started this a lot, a lot younger. I didn't start Pampered Chef until I was in my fifties. Uh, I did have, uh, 30, 33 years ago. I, and I still have my uh, three original, um, items products by Pampered Chef, which is the medium stone pan. Uh, the pizza cutter and the garlic press were my three original purchases with Pampered Chef. And uh, since then, the whole entire kitchen's Pampered Chef. There's a few things that, that it aren't, but majority is. <laughs> right. uh, let's see, Nova Scotia. Oh, that would take a while. Definitely following. Thank you, Universal. I've seen some of your videos and can't wait to see more. Thank you, Universal. You love Pampered Chef? All right, so if you're up in Nova Scotia, we need to get you a Canadian consultant because I can only sell inside the United States, just FYI. Uh, Pampered Chef is located in several countries, United States, Canada, um, France, Germany, and Austria, I believe. Austria is the other one. So those are the five countries that Pampered Chef sells to. Uh, let's see. This, the stoneware is awesome. And actually this month, if there's a sale on stoneware. All the stoneware is 15% off or the, the, um, the, the, the stoneware that is not, um, coated on it. That's the non, non coated. There is a new pipe, deep dish pie plate out. That's brand new. That just came out October 1st, which is, you know, what, uh, Saturday. That one's really nice. I had the gray one, so I don't really need the white one, but it's the best pie, uh, dish to make because your bottom of your pie always gets brown. I hate when you dig into a pie and it's pasty white down there. I'm like, don't even eat it. It's not, not worth the calories, but when it's nice and crusty brown on the bottom as, as well as on the top, then it's a great pie. All right. But the stoneware is on sale this month. All right. It's 15% off the regular stoneware. Uh, I have it all down in, down in my, uh, baker's rack in the other room there. I keep it all over. Hey, Cheryl loves coffee. How are you doing, Cheryl? Uh, so anyway, we're going to put this in the oven and my mom just went to, for a nap. So I won't have to eat this until um, 6.15 or so. So I'm okay. Uh, uh oh, some, is, okay. So some of the, some comments were filtered to protect the community's experience. Ooh, what are y'all saying up there? Naughty, naughty. If you got blocked by, by, uh, TikTok. Hey user, thanks for coming in. So anyway, let me know where you're coming in so I could give you a shout out. My name is Alexis and we are uh, cooking shepherd's pie. I already did it. It's already in the pan pot right here. All I have to do is put it in my oven, let it cook for a little bit and then brown it on the top. I will do a little quick video on uh, slicing it open and saying, hey, go over to, go over to uh, YouTube and you'll see the whole entire, this whole entire video because I do download it and put it over there. So thanks for coming in. Let me say, we can put that. Uh, one hand. It is very warm. Okay. Uh, oops, it's going to fall over on me. And this is really, really hot. <laughs> it, it's hot on the bottom already. So anyway, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you all spending a little bit of your time and chatting with me. Please reach out to me to get your pampered chef, your pampered chef to your house, because I want you to make what I'm cooking at my house at your house. And this is so cute. And this is a small one. Okay. This, there is a bigger one right here. You can see the size difference on them. All right, and then we have the other pot that I cooked it with. So anyway, thanks for coming in. I'll talk to you all next time. Oh, let me see. I should have made shepherd's pie today. I have hamburger and was uh, used up 
and couldn't think of anything. Now I remember I had bought the package of seasoning, LOL for it. Hey, Universal, you know, you can always cook up all your beef and then um, just freeze it. And then when you need it, just pull out the beef. It's already cooked up. You just have to add the rest of the ingredients. So thanks for coming in. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.